yo, we didn't we didn't really promote speakers for like a couple weeks from the from the the actual event. And Drew was like, yo, we gotta promote speakers. I'm like, I don't really want to. I want to promote community. I want to promote information, not a person. Uh, not too uh, long ago, you had a huge event, huge down in Miami, yeah. right? Right. And, and I, I, before then before. was virtual. Then before then was like, I, I believe the very first one, hence where the podcast came from. Yeah. But how many people were in this last, this last event real quick? We had about 20, 200, I believe, about 22, 2300 people. 22. What, what was the first one? Uh, 550. So, yeah. so <laughs> the, okay, so thank you. Thank, I just, I just need those stats real quick. So, 550 to over 2K, right? Yeah. What, how do people even get to that stats? Because some people are going to look at, oh, he did the event, he got two over 2K. I could do this too. And people are not understanding those, those first couple events, even those 20, 10, $20 events that you did. Like, can you talk through the journey of having like a live event for the people, for the people? Yeah. It's dangerous because okay. <laughs> I mean, very few people, people don't like don't do events because it's a very public success or failure. So if nobody comes, you can't hide it. Right. <laughs> like, like if I say I'm gonna sell a hundred thousand books, nobody really knows how many books I sold. You know what I mean? Mm. Like if I say this is gonna be the biggest t-shirt brand in the world, nobody really knows how many I sold. But if I say that, if I do an event, and I set out all these chairs, and nobody's in the chairs, um, you can see it. So yeah. um, I have, ah, I, I can't really see what I'm saying this very. Very rarely have I ever hit my number. So the first year, I said I was going to have five. The first year, I said I was going to have a thousand. We had five hundred and fifty. Okay. I missed the number. If I said I was going to have five fifty, I would have probably had two. Well, we just go big. Like this year, we said we was going to have three thousand. We had twenty two hundred. Missed the number. But like. I, I promote it with the same excitement every single year and it continues to grow. So first year I say, I'm going to have a thousand. We have five fifty, and a lot of people loved it. They were just blown away. And then the second year um, COVID hit and we had to take it to virtual. I told them that year we was going to have 2000. I forgot how many we had. It, it was, it was just a, it was a, it was rough because everybody went virtual. Right. And, um, we just couldn't it was get a weird people. year. It was a weird year. It was weird. It was a weird year. Um, but yeah, so uh, that was 2020. May, yeah, 2020. Didn't do anything 2021. And then 2022, we're like, yo, we're going to have 3,000 people and we have 2,200. Now, it still looked full. It's still amazing. It was just absolutely amazing. I'm just going for the stars. Like, I just, I just go crazy. So, but here's, if, if we're talking about how to, um, you know, what you need to do in terms of an event is you got to be good at it. Whatever it is you're talking about, just be good at it and like publicly good at it. And then you have to get, uh, start building relationships. And I have a lot of relationships. So when I do an event, people say, yo, I want to be there and I don't have to ask them to promote. They just do. Right? right. And I've been in the community so long building a community that when I say we're going to do an event, Yo, we sold like 500 tickets the first day on the morning meetup. Hmm. Born to the community. Yeah, but I've, I've been there for a while. So events events are tough. Um, I would probably suggest for somebody to kind of do some virtual stuff to kind of build your influence first. But again, I've been doing events since 2014 at these bars and lounges, moving people. So I think... Um, I don't know if I answered the question, but did. Um, yeah, events events are tough and it can be very discouraging. So we were, I was with Jovan. This was a couple years ago, and I was encouraging Joe, like, "Yo, do an event, man. We got the venue. You already here." He said, "Yes, I'm gonna do an event. It's gonna be like a game night. We're gonna do it." Yeah, and, you know, getting closer to any event, really, a lot of times you get discouraged because, especially if you don't hit the numbers, you're like, "Ooh, it's looking like." 
He told me the day of. He was like, "Yo, man, I hope it. I hope it storms." <laughs> like, oh wow! Yeah, of course, because he was looking for an excuse to say mm. why it didn't work out. But you know, some people came, and it was really, really cool. But um, I think you really, really have to have the stomach for for an event because it's a lot of work, and I don't know how many of those I'm going to do because it's so much work, and it's not a lot of it's not a lot of um, financial benefit one. Mm-hmm. Um, the impact is over a couple of days, but you got to do so much to impact these people over a couple of days. I can, I do that on a regular basis. So I can do virtual events and all that kind of stuff without all that preparation. And I can impact so many people. I can do a challenge. Like it, I, I, I don't know if events is tough. Y'all just had one, right? How was it? It was amazing. It was only for the community though. Yeah. It was only, it was only, that's, that's what I love. Just serving the community. So, we did that, you know, but you know my ultimate goal though? What's that? My ultimate goal is to do an event and not even not let anyone that's not in the community buy a ticket. It's not that's for everybody. Same vibe. You know, I don't want to promote, I don't want to market, I don't want I don't want to do nothing. Just if you're in the community, that's it. Actually, I approached uh CJ with a with a concept too. So he ain't hit me back yet, but you know. Oh, come on, see. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do got to follow up real quick. Sorry, Moose. I got to follow up because, yeah. you know, I, I notice everything. So can we talk about the strategy of promoting an event? Because I've noticed, right, those people who are on your podcast happen to be speakers at your event, which then not only gives them a platform to say their message, but it allows content to be put on their platform and yours for a constant reminder that the event is coming. Then you do some live, separate lives on a on a YouTube channel that has over about 200K subscribers. Now you create a separate series, which is more content. So is there, how do you go about the strategies of promoting your events? Good. Um, again, first, I'm going straight to the community that we built first. Like, first and foremost, I'm going to let them know, and everything that I do, um, they get an extreme discount. First okay. and foremost. Like, the tickets, I want to say, like, for Black Equity Con is like $400 or something like that. Mm-hmm. That first day, morning meetup, got it for 50 bucks. Two mm-hmm. days. I take care of my community, first and foremost. Um, but how we started the first, the very first conference was... This is actually how I started like the podcast where I'm just interviewing people who are going to be speakers at the conference because I'm thinking if I interview the person, if I interview Moose and he's going to like, he's going to be a speaker at the conference, people might, yo, I love Moose. I didn't know who Moose was, but I love him. And I'm like, yo, you want to meet Moose? They're like, yeah, come to the conference. He's speaking at it. So that was my first strategy on how the podcast got started. If you look at them first, like 10 or 12 episodes, there's not. There's no intro to the podcast. It's like the podcast didn't even have a name. So here's the thing, Melissa. I didn't name this podcast yet. Okay. It'll name itself. It'll name itself. Yeah, it'll name itself. It was just, hey, y'all, we're here. I don't got a name for this podcast, but we're going to talk about some stuff. Mm. Really. Look at the first few episodes. And um, that was my strategy. My strategy is always to elevate the podcast people that are going to be there let me just promote people this year my goal was not to promote the speakers though because everybody has events they are promoting the speakers oh so-and-so is going to be here so-and-so is going to be there and i was telling my partner while we were doing it because i partnered with drew uh, Mm byob and and we went back and forth about this i said i don't really want to make flyers for the speakers I only want to sell people on the outcomes and what they're going to learn, regardless of who's going to be teaching it. I don't want it to be a like a, a fanfare show or like I don't want I don't want people to come because a certain person is going to be there. I want them to come one for the information, but two, because 3000 other people are going to be there. And that's where the magic is. Yo, we didn't we didn't really promote speakers for like a couple of weeks from the from the, the actual event. And Drew was like, yo, we got to promote speakers. I'm like, I don't really want to. I want to promote community. I want to promote information, not a person. And um, 
I think it worked out really, really well because people are buying tickets without knowing who's going to speak. And that moving forward is how I really want to promote every single conference, not for the person that's going to be there, but for the other people that's going to be there, the community, the connection, networking.